Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to tonight's show. We are being plagued by technical difficulties, so I apologize for the lateness. Uh, for those of you watching this on YouTube later, you won't you won't care, and it's fine. Um, but for those of everyone who's in here and dealing with it now, I apologize ahead of time. We got one more guest on their way. Um, and we'll see what we can do if they ever get their stuff figured out. In the meantime and in between time, we're going we're gonna to keep pushing on. Um, and we'll talk about tonight's topic here. I'm going to make this full screen so people don't see all the silly channels on the side and stuff fits better and yada, yada, yada. Chris, you are a spinning ball of death. I don't know what's up with that. Uh, you might try turning your camera on and off again because that's how text, text uh, support works around here. Um. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So uh, tonight's topic, bad dice and bad decisions. Right? Or is it bad rolls and bad decisions? Well, that's here. But we're talking about unlucky rolls and uh, unlucky uh, bad choices by your players. And luckily, we have some fantastic guests. And I will, again, have introduction times for other people when and if they show up. Uh, but we're going to start with you two. We got Chris and Ryan with us. Unfortunately, their third member of their trio is super swamped tonight and couldn't make it. Um, so no biggie there, though. We're going to push forward with it. And we're going to start with the spinning ball of death currently. Chris, tell us about yourself. Who are you? What you do? And then... Uh, We'll go to Ryan next. Let me try to turn off my camera and turn it back in real quick. But uh, I'm Chris. I'm a native to uh, Denver, Colorado. I am a serial entrepreneur. I've started uh, multiple different businesses. I started about uh, 11 years ago and um, I got out of the corporate world. I did corporate finance for a while and uh, decided that I wanted to open up a sports bar. And so I put a second mortgage on my house and uh, looked at quite a few different places and decided to um, purchase the Crimson and Gold Tavern here in Denver. And uh, I've owned it ever since and it has been a good investment. So that's kind of what started my entrepreneurial career. Um, after that, I actually uh, purchased another uh, sports bar location and that's in my hometown of Highlands Ranch, Colorado, just 15 miles south of Denver. And uh, we built that up, and that was roughly seven years ago, and uh, was doing well. Um, eventually got a third spot, which was called the Fainting Goat, which uh, is in Denver as well. And uh, things were going really well until COVID hit and uh, really put a damper on everything, and, and it was tough to make it through. Um, you know, I sold the Fainting Goat a year ago, but I still have the two other sports bars. But while I was in quarantine and had all the time to think, um, that's where the idea came to me with LIA, which is LIA, it's Liabilities into Assets. It's an app that we built. And um, it's actually like Airbnb meets Craigslist. So you can go on there and um, it's a peer-to-peer -peer app marketplace where anybody can rent anything from anybody. So you could rent a lawnmower or a bike or tools or a snowboard or anything. So we're trying to uh, provide, you know, people with the opportunities to save money on the things that they'll only use once or twice or, you know, um, uh, really make money on the things that they have in their house that are just laying around. And so uh, we got that going and, and Ryan and I have known each other for a long time. We used to play football together. And uh, so I'm a, I'm a sports guy, like uh, playing football playing softball. I've got two kids. I've got a wife here at home, been married for 18 years um, and uh, just like to stay active and, and snowboard and, and do all those things and, and work business. And then one other project we're working on now and Ryan's actually sporting it, but is our crispy cocktails right there. So uh, we've got four different flavors. We came out with that. We're in 27 different locations now. So we've got our hands full with everything and uh we keep chugging along, and, and we've definitely gone through some ups and downs, but we've learned a lot, and uh, yeah, happy to be on the show. Fantastic. Ryan, what about you? Obviously, we heard about LIA a little bit, but what's your what's your stuff? Yeah, no, first off, Rook, thanks for having us. Super excited to be here. You, just from the 10 minutes we've been on here, you're very impressed with what you're doing and wish the best for you. Uh, go forward. So uh, same with me. I was actually at Western Union uh, in the corporate world for 21 years. I bled yellow and black 
uh, for literally 21 years. Never thought I would leave and got the opportunity to go to another corporation. Did that for three years. Chris um, was always <clears throat> in, in my mind, we would connect and I just kind of saw how he lived his life. He would take a little bit more risk than I, I was so used to the corporate life and just kind of easy going stuff. Um, you know, I kind of got interested and asked more questions to Chris and we had an opportunity to finally work together. I said to myself, let's go for it. Took a step out of the carpet world and that's where Leah was born. Um, he brought the idea to me. I had some connections um, to build an app, which I still have um, at, a, at a very much lower cost. So we connected with that team. Uh, they built a beautiful app for us, which you've seen, Rook, and you mentioned. And uh, like you said, we're just growing that business, working this business and the other two businesses. So really uh, three small businesses and a startup is, is kind of where we're at. And um, that's why we're on here. And we just wanted to share. And uh, we look forward to hearing more about all of you and what we're going to do on this show. And we're obviously open to answer any questions that, you know, maybe there's some other people out there that are in the corporate world or a, a, what I would say, quote unquote, a normal job and maybe not a startup or a small business might have some questions. We're, we're here for them to answer any questions and looking forward. Fantastic. Well, we're going to, we're going to focus on more of the fun stuff tonight. So don't, don't, don't get too corporate on me. Ha ha ha. Never. Uh, no, 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 that's over. That's over. <laughs> But I will have to say, uh, I think I think you guys are doing doing great. Three three small businesses or two in a startup is a hell of a lot of work, even for the the trio that you guys got going on. Um, so hats off to that. So back into Thank tonight's you. topic: bad yeah. dice and bad decision. Now, in the context that we're talking in game, right? Uh, we're talking literal dice rolling, right? Whereas what you guys might be talking about might be a little bit more metaphysical. Those dice that you roll. You talked about selling your house and, and going in on uh, your investments and starting that way, right? Um, and dealing with COVID, right? The 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 dice that uh, the fates give us and all that fun stuff is sometimes a very cruel mistress. Um, so we'll kind of hit those perspectives a little bit. Um, and then for bad decisions, we're all business owners. We've all made mistakes at least once, right? It's not just me. Uh <laughs> Uh, heck, we were talking about before, uh, changing names. You know, we had a really long name for our, our, still is our corporate name. We switched it to Sages Inc. And uh, we're not an incorporation, so that was a big no-no. Uh, so we had, you know, half a year's worth of advertising and all kinds of other fun stuff that just went straight down the drain because, bad choice. Don't call yourself Inc. when you're an LLC. Uh, <laughs> but good note is we have a better name now because Epic Sages is a much funner thing to say than Sages Inc. Um, so... Let's uh let's get into some of the other stuff. So in your guys' experience, um, we're gonna start with Chris. Uh, when you were what what is what is something that you would say uh, was a really positive roll of the dice for you, right? What was it? What was something that happened that was excessively positive? Just like hit your what we call a natural twenty. You, you rolled the best thing you could roll. Have you had one of those moments? You think, whether it's personal or business. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, yeah. I think, you know, the biggest one I, I would say, which means a lot to me in my life, would, would be in picking my wife and meeting her. Rolling the dice um, and meeting her, being married for 18 years, basically hitting the jackpot there. We've got two beautiful children. Um, I think that who you want to spend your life with and, and who you decide to spend those moments with is a huge part of your life. And, and even going strong in our relationship is, is really good. And she's helped me through the ups and downs. So that to me was like hitting a grand slam for sure. Um, so that would be my personal life that I kind of think of uh, immediately because it's trickled into a lot of other things. She's definitely been my support and uh, just the love of my life and really helped me through so much. And then I would say business wise, I really think that just stepping out on a limb and picking the crimson and gold and starting there, um, you know, I was able to buy an established business and it really has provided the lifestyle, the freedom, the opportunity, the growth, everything in my life since then. Um, and I couldn't be where I'm at today if I wouldn't have made that business decision in the beginning. And I, I looked at probably 40 different locations before I picked that one. And I don't know what it was. It just was mismanaged. It had a lot of cash flow. Um, it just needed some love. And uh, here we are 11 years later. 
um, just growing off of it, basically. Um, so that would be my business roll of the dice that's, <clears throat> that's really worked out well. Now in the future, I'm hoping that rolling the dice on Leah is the big time winner um, because I really do feel passionate about it. Um, and uh, I really hope that we can help and give value to millions of people. And I hope that people um, like it, um, will get a lot of use out of it, and uh, that it, it just does very well. So, Awesome. Hey, Chris, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cut you off really quick and have you jump back in because uh, you are roboting really hard. Luckily, I could understand everything you were said, but there was a lot of, a lot of static in there. I don't know what's going on over there. So join, join back yeah. right away. It was still pretty clear. It was yeah, yeah, no, I mean, to- but it, thankfully we could understand is what exactly. I'm saying. Exactly. But... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, what about you, Ryan? What are, what are some positive rolls of the dice for you? Yeah, for me too. Um, for me, um, <clears throat> if you go way back, it was um, leaving my kind of my hometown and kind of coming way south, miles and miles away yeah. from know the old scene all the same friends all the same people all the same everything and kind of trying to just needed to try to do something on my own try to prove it to myself that i could do it you know so for me stepping out of that for zone um really made me buckle down and grind and try to build a, a life um that i was happy about and then same same like chris you know I was, I was, I kind of always had commitment issues, no matter what it would be. So, like for me to really find the right person was challenging. And then when I did meet my wife, you know, it just kind of took off. We had the same interests, right? So we like to travel, we like to hike, we like to bike. We we had like the same uh, <clears throat> interests, and it really took off from there. So that was super exciting. So moved away from home, met the right girl, and you know, at the same time, I was kind of growing and, and learning a lot in my corporate career, just coming out of a kind of like a baseball career, I would say, because I was, I was college baseball player and then played a little bit afterwards too. So transitioning from that athletic life into the business life and then into married life. And then eventually, you know, traveling and doing all the cool things you do when you meet a girl and when it's hot and heavy, right. And then all of a sudden it's like, what's next? And it's like a kiddo, you know, try, 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 nothing happens. Ah, let's buy a car. Let's go to Mexico, book all that, buy the car. Next thing you know, you're pregnant. Holy cow, guess we're going to Mexico pregnant. You can't eat fish now, honey. Sorry. So it's kind of like how it happened, and it was super cool. Um, so, yeah, that was kind of like the takeoff moment, right? And you could kind of lean on each other. And she was she was a uh, – she could student teach and live with me while I provided because she wanted to be a high school teacher. So I kind of provided. She came up, and then, um, you know, she finally got her first high school job, and she just keeps climbing in her career, and now she's killing it. And then I could kind of come out of corporate, take a bit of a risk, do something different because she was coming up and I could come down a little bit and there was a happy medium. And I will just say that it's been a really good decision. It was a really big risk for me to leave corporate because of that comfortability. But I had faith in everything Chris was doing. I wanted to be a part of it. I didn't want to miss it. And that's why we are where we are today. And that's why we want Leah to be a huge success because... It provides, it provides two people two and community, people and, community. And, and every transaction yeah. goes a bit goes to make a wish foundation. So we're helping kids too. So, you know, instead of making all this money for a corporation, which I did for 23 years, now we can actually do it for other people and, and kind of like bless kids with, through make a wish and, and our community with this app. So I'm like super excited about that. Oh yeah. Hey, Amanda, just as a note, you're kind of reverbing really hard on me. Uh, anyway, you can mess with your settings so you, we can't hear you. I think you're, Speakers or microphones are going over each other. Um, I don't have. I'm. I'm in my headphones. Oh, weird. So okay. I, don't have, I don't have any sound coming through. All right. I don't know what it is then. Um, <laughs> so, uh, side note, side question, whatever. Uh, hello, welcome to the show, Amanda. This is our other Hi. guest. Technical difficulties aside, welcome in. Um, Hi. Let's uh, get you your minute. Tell us who you are, what you do, all that fun stuff, where people can find you. Uh, and then we'll yeah. get back to our questions. Great, great. Sorry about that. Um, so I'm Amanda, and um, I I am a, a singer, an actress, a YouTuber, and podcaster. Um, I run a weekly like music show <laughs> um, on YouTube every Wednesday, usually. Uh, it's called Amanda on Demanda, and it's on uh, my network. is called the Audacity Network, and we do all kinds of 
um, different kinds of shows and stuff. So I have that show and we also do the podcast, which is um, live streamed on YouTube on the Vaudassi Network. And then we edit it later for podcasting. Um, and that's called the Magical Mystery Hour, um, which is really, really fun. I love that show. We're actually starting season two on Sunday. Exciting. <laughs> and we tell, yeah, we tell all kinds of just fun story, like mysterious stories. It could be anything um aliens ghosts it could be true crime it could be um just unsolved mysteries in general um yeah and so i have my co-host co-host paul carganella who um started the vaudassi network uh, during the pandemic when we were all musicians and actors out of work um so this is a place for us to just do our thing and uh, so we did that and so that's really fun i also teach uh children music <laughs> Fantastic. So it sounds like you, like our other guests here, wear a lot of hats, both literally oh, yeah. and metaphorically. Um, <laughs> yes. So uh, I'm going to ask you the same question I asked them, because uh, we're talking about the bad roll, bad dice, bad decisions, yada, yada. We're going to start with the positives, right? So can you think okay. of anything in your personal life or, or career life where you've rolled a nat 20, just rolled the best possible <laughs> outcome right off the bat? Oh, my God. <laughs> A few times, a few times. I've had really good luck. Um, well, firstly, with this, the whole like Vaudassi Network thing was such a fluke. Um, and it's become a huge part of my life. I was doing a um, a musical theater singing competition online. And I had, because I've been feeling like, really depressed with the pandemic. I have plenty of anxiety and germophobia naturally. <laughs> and the pandemic sent me into overdrive. Um, but we... Um, started that oh so we were doing the singing competition and paul's wife jamie who has the voice of an angel um, was doing this competition as well and she swept it and we were like what who is this who is this person and what is she doing in our community theater because <laughs> she was amazing and um but then so she won the competition and then our, so her husband paul emailed me or well, facebook messaged me and like, hey, do you want to be a part of this thing that we do? We do improv and music shows on YouTube. <laughs> and I was like, ah, you know, at the time, you know, I had never done anything like that. And my inclination was to say, no, who are you? <laughs> and you're way too friendly right now. Um, I don't trust you. <laughs> and um, But I decided that I was so just so in my head about the pandemic that I was like, oh, all right, all right, I'll just say yes. Just this one time I will say yes to a complete stranger on the internet. <laughs> and, um, and then, so I did that. And then uh, literally, I think I've only not done like one or two shows in the last, um, however many years it's been since 2021, I think we started maybe 2020, late 2020. Um, it's become part of my life. We do these big shows. We do, deep cuts which is like uh just music based on a theme so let's get together and chat and play songs for each other i do my show we do this podcast it's been just the biggest part of my life <laughs> and i've met like all these people i have like 40 new friends <laughs> it's like it's been incredible so that's one of them for sure thank you yeah. um, all right, not yeah. to cut you off but we got four billion questions to get through so Go ahead. this is kind of a, a jump back to you guys over here um did Wes give you the don't talk to internet, uh, random yahoos on the internet ever again speech uh, once you guys got on the blocks? That was, that yes. was my, my favorite speech he gave right off the bat. Is you, you gave it away. All your information for no good reason. What are you thinking? Don't ever do it again. Luckily, it worked out this time. Uh, that was hilarious. So I'm going to segue into the uh, the bad rolls, right? So this is, this is the opposite. What, can you guys think of a professional moment uh, where you guys rolled the opposite of that critical. You just, something that was out of your control, the fates decided to F you, have a nice day, uh, you get nothing, do not pass go, do not collect $200. Do you guys have one of those events in your uh, careers? <clears throat> that so you're comfortable me, sharing, I should probably clarify. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I'll, I'll, I'll do two really quick. Um, the biggest one for me that was out of my control was when COVID hit. Um, and we got the shutdown and I went from, you know, doing all sorts of volume and having cash flow to absolutely zero. That to me was the most, was the most eye-opening experience 
uh, that I had to go through. And, you know, originally I didn't know how to deal with it. And then I got into a little bit of a depression and then, you know, I got into drinking a lot and it just kind of spiraled and it was bad. And um, it took a lot of motivation and like self-help and just like getting myself into the right mindset to get to where I'm at today and really get through that process. You know, I lost one of the locations um, because of COVID basically and uh, almost basically lost everything. And uh, we were able to, you know, get through it as best as we could. And now we're, you know, sort of out of the woods now, but that by far was the biggest challenge and obstacle that we had to go through professionally. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay. That's, yeah, I mean, I'm sure that's a pretty common story for a lot of us, especially the ones that started before COVID and knew what things were like back then. I, uh, Epic Sages or uh, Apprentice Hero Helper started during COVID, so we got to, we got to start off with all the fun. Um, so what about, what about you, Ryan? What about, what about in your professional journey? Sorry about that. Yes, um, I, for me, honestly, um, I would just say that I got, you know, you know, you hear about all these people that are with corporations for a really long time, and we'll just say they get lucky and they get a package, like a really good package, and they get kind of, we'll say they ride into the sunset, who knows what happens to them six or 12 months later, but they get like a free ride, and they can go travel, they can do all this cool stuff, right, and I was just always such a hard worker and a grinder, and I was just brought up that way, that mm -hmm. I kind of turned into, I'll say, a workaholic, and that always equaled no package no layoff for me but what what happened was the opposite just kept piling 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 and i was just so stressed out i was up to here like the left side of my face would kind of go numb i would start to get tingly it was like my blood pressure and i had to like do like exercises to like calm down because i was chained to the desk so many web calls so many emails i couldn't keep up but i felt like i had to keep up and i was just doing it you know for the man for the man for the man the whole time and making this company millions and millions of dollars and i wasn't really reaping any of the benefits but i feel like i i kind of let them take advantage of me and never went to hr i never like stuck up for myself and i i hung in there way too long until it was a little bit detrimental right and made me almost sick and um it made my my decision to co-work for chris and uh, you know do new experiences again in the small business side and the startup side a lot easier but man i i really should have i usually i should have put my foot down and stuck up for myself more um because there's obviously more to life than that and i i feel like i missed out on a, a lot of time with my family and you know and obviously other things too right so hobbies whatever it may be but um thankfully i finally did put my foot down but i drug myself through the mud for way too long for sure you know and and that's a story we hear a lot when we do work with our business stuff you know what i mean that you know the the dude that does the most does the most for the least um yeah. and one of our one of our side goals you know especially when we're working with business and reorganizing middle management to where they understand that their people are people and need to be treated as such uh, you know, we, we really do like to focus in on the, like, you need to reward the people that are succeeding, right? Cause like in an adventure, the dude that does nothing gets the least gold, right? You can share and make everything equal and yada, yada. But, uh, the dude that slayed the dragon gets the cool dragon necklace. You know what I mean? Um, so, uh, that's something we emphasize when we're, we're re-educating or reteaching business people from the top down. Um, so it, it's good to hear that, like. That's that's a legitimate experience that people get all the time. So, yeah, bur like burnouts. No, burnout is no good. No good indeed. Amanda, your turn. <laughs> well, just to piggyback on that really quick, I do. Please. I feel like yes, I do, and I I feel like I always say yes to everything. <laughs> For sure, I think it's really common to uh, to, to overexert yourself, and that's definitely something. But the other thing that came to mind for me is like I I am such a nice person <laughs> like honest and like yeah, I'm gonna do this and I've had a few times where I've met and worked with people that I was like oh my god these are amazing people I love them um they're gonna do this for me they're doing that and I've had them turn out to in a once or twice even maybe like they were not at all the people that they said they were and i found out later after you know okay we're working together okay we're friends we're like hanging out we're sharing our lives and then i'm like oh my god <laughs> like, i can't believe i judged that person because like 
the only thing that was true about them was their name. <laughs> um that's rough and it's wild you're like i don't know if it's like something in i mean i guess maybe like in a, in like the show business sense of it that people try to pretend to be things they're not um like from that, your perspective I, like an actual bad actor <laughs> yeah, exactly. like it, like it. yeah yeah it's it's wild like i said like the only thing i knew about them was their name <laughs> um so uh yeah i guess that's where i've definitely rolled is a, a perception check uh, I would say an insight check is what you failed on that one. Okay, okay. <laughs> I've come from many <laughs> schools of TV. <laughs> so, uh, Chris, you still with us? Your your face has been stuck in the same position for a while. I don't know if your camera just died or whatnot. I'm, yeah, I'm here. Can you okay. see me? I, well, we see you. Your face is there, but it's definitely not. Your lips aren't moving, so it's fine. You're in a good position. You're not on a wonky face. Life is good. Uh, <laughs> okay, I'll turn so, it off and back on. You're good. So let's let's so kind of. Yeah. Sometimes we all know fate slaps us in the face and we don't really have a choice, right? So those are those bad roles, the unlucky stuff. You know, COVID is a great example. Not a lot of us had a control over what we could do or how things would go uh, with COVID. Sometimes we got lucky and we're able to get through things without too much of an issue. Um, or we're able to, to wiggle our way around the things that really hurt us, yada, yada, yada. Succeeded on the checks we needed to. But sometimes we open the wrong doors and we make the wrong decisions, right? So... Uh, in business stuff, again, example I brought up earlier, picking the wrong name when you're an LLC, you can't call yourself an Inc. Uh, that was a poor decision on my part. Not enough research, not enough making sure that what I was doing was appropriate, listening to advice that as much as I respect the person that uh, gave it to me, they were wrong. And uh, that was just because they weren't in a place where they, you know, the rules that they followed did not apply to me, um, which is whatever, right? No salt, no hate. But it was definitely a bad decision on my part and cost six months to half you know, a year's worth of work to just kind of and have to restart again um, from a marketing perspective. Uh, <laughs> but in that sense, um, where where are some like bad decisions that you guys like know that that was the wrong choice? You want me to start? Sure, um, if you would like. Sure. So I've made so many bad decisions when it's come to business and I tell myself that I like to go to the school of hard knocks and really like to learn the hard way, kind of do everything myself, but I've definitely hired the wrong people. I've held on to them too long. I've had employees steal from me. I've had employees fight with me. I've had, um, you know, I've made a lot of bonehead decisions. I've lost money on stupid deals that could have gone better. Um, basically anything that you can think of, I've probably done the wrong thing. Um, one of the things too, that I think that wasn't right when I started too is I would, I would drink cause I, I own a sports bar. I would drink while I was working there and making bad decisions then too, which definitely wasn't of sound mind. So I think that controlling yourself and, and being disciplined is crucial when it comes to success and when it comes to, to leading a, a good life. And that's one thing that I, I learned the hard way. So, um, you know, there's a lot of things that you can kind of brush off and there's going to be some things that slip into the cracks or um, some money lost or some, some costs, but you try to limit those as best as you can. But I would say the thing that's really helped me get to where I'm at now is just having discipline. So, um, yeah, those those would be some of the things that that I would say that are just stupid decisions. <laughs> yeah, so I'm going to pick off one one of the points specifically for gamers or gaming. You know, when you're when you are being a dungeon master or a player and you decide to drink and have fun, right? Most of us are adults. Uh, if you're not an adult, don't drink. Uh, but for those of us that are, uh, and you're playing games and having fun with your friends, sometimes these can go on for four hours. If you don't have a beer or a drink while you're playing, or that's the whole intention of the game, right? You're, you take a shot every time you kill an enemy, something like that, right? Uh, besides, obviously, be careful with what you're doing. Uh, understand that bad decisions are going to be made when you're under the influence, right? If that's the, the point of what you're doing and that's the fun you're having with your friends, cool beans. Have at it. Make your bad decisions and roll with it. Uh if it's not, and you're just being the jerk at the table that doesn't know how to say no, uh, consider that, right? Especially if you're building the story, if people can't understand the names of the cities or the people that you're trying to talk as, uh, they're going to have a bad time, right? 
So being responsible in that center, being disciplined, as Chris said, uh, is going to be really important for st both storytellers and players, right? Uh, don't limit the fun you have, but also don't wreck other people's. Simple message. Ryan, jumping over to you, since this is the order we're going in for now. Wah -ha -ha. Well, it sounds like there might be... Uh, is there youngsters that watch this too? Uh, sometimes. Uh, it's it's meant for adults, so don't worry about that. Okay, okay, cool. Well, I just want to, you know, I think it's cool. I mean, <laughs> shoot, I wish I would have heard something like this when I was coming up, you know what I mean? So it helps. But um, to Chris's point, like, I've done some detrimental things too. Listen, nobody's perfect, right? Like, honestly, I mean, from 14 to 21, I don't remember much. Uh, from 1 to 13, I remember all of it. And then 14 to 21, it's like, you know, just went way too hard. We won't get into the details, right? But kind of... You know, a lot of people have that rock bottom story, right? And learn the hard way, like Chris said, school of hard knocks. That was me. I was the oldest of six, man. I didn't have anybody to learn from. I didn't have anybody to look up to. It, everything I had, I had to earn, right? I'll say that my brother and sisters coming up after me, they, I, I made a path. Was it the best path? No, but they had a little, they had a little respect where I didn't have, I had to earn everything. You know what I mean? So I, I kind of crashed and burned, hit rock bottom for eight good years, man. I was out of control, nothing in moderation, just. Oh, bad news bears right um honestly for me it was a it, it ended up being a faith thing that centered me right um but you know I, I, what, I'll, what i'll throw out there is like chris said you know he had a lot of bad hires and then like i said when i kind of burned out i surrounded myself with kind of the wrong people in all those phases um what i since learned since then i'm 45 years old now right is um get a personal protection team around you right whether it's your wife, your dad, your brothers, your sisters, your best friends, whoever it is, but truly people that you can trust. Like Chris, Chris, uh, since I've come on board to work with Chris, he has built a community of people. He's built his businesses around the people instead of the business. And I've seen him grow a lot like that. So I've learned a lot from him. And I will say a personal protection team is important. Any big decisions you might make, whether it's a car, a house, an investment, a new business venture, whatever, you can get with those people. You can feel safe, secure that you're going to get the right feedback. They're not going to just be serving you bull, kind of like the people Amanda dealt with where they were bad actors. And to just have that good team, then you can make a sound decision. And another thing I'll say, um, I, I always kick my day off with the, the right mindset before you hit the day running. Um, I never had a name for it until I met Chris, but Chris would say, you know, I'm done with my early morning behaviors. I'm ready to rock, you know? And I was like, that's sweet. So whatever that may be, he calls them EMBs and I freaking love that. And I say, now I say it, it's part of my vocabulary. I'm like early morning behaviors, you know, whatever that may be to fire up for today, stay positive, stay everything in moderation, kick butt, take names, you know, achieve those goals you know, bless your family and, and then call it a day and, and hit the, hit the pillow, you know, with the good feeling. Right. So that's kind of my spiel, Rook. I'll keep it short there. I, uh, I love that. That's a, that's a great name. Congratulations, Chris. I'm stealing that. Uh, <laughs> that's cool. well, really oh, cool. is that a steal? That yeah. It's an interception. No, that's fine. Oh. Uh, one yeah. of the things that I say too, that in the, with Ryan in this way is like, I try to implement the OQP method. So only quality people, only surround yourself with quality people, and you should pr promote a quality life. Because I think that a lot of the experiences and the environments that you're in influence your decisions and, and what you do, whether it goes to life or gaming or anything. So, so I like the OQP method, surround yourself with good quality people, only quality people around you, and things should fall in place a little bit better. You know, and that's where Ryan comes from. That's why we work together. <laughs> I love that. And, you know, that's really easy to represent in tabletop role-playing games. You know, the tables you choose to play with, the people you choose to be your adventuring party can be those people for you. I still play with people that I played with when I was a teenager, right? I still talk to them from time to time um, because they were those people for me. They had my back when I needed it, those kind of things, right? Um, and it can literally be family, right? I still play with my, my mom and dad and, and my uh, step-parents and all that fun stuff. You know, it's something we try to do when we all have time because we're adults and have crazy schedules. But, you know what I mean? Uh, I still play with my uh, group of Alaskans that came up here. Well, my business partner, Younger, is one of them. You know what I mean? we uh, He came up with me, and I was his first DM, and I taught him how to play. And he's, you know, again, a quality person. I like I like that one. Only quality people. I will probably steal that one as well. You, I like these acronyms, uh, so thank you. Uh, <laughs> But, uh, yeah, good people, right? And, you know, everyone's taste and quality differs, right? Everyone's, uh, 
exception point can change, right? Your table is different than other people's tables. We like to say that in the community that it's like, your table is your table, your rules are your rules. Uh, what you allow and what you don't allow are totally different in totally different places. So knowing knowing where you fit in appropriately is good, right? Letting people join you and see if they fit, sweet. If they're trash, to the curb. Take them out on Tuesday. It really whatever. comes down to, you know, it really comes down to finding the right tribe for you. You know, who is your tribe, you know? Nice. Okay. So, jump it over to Amanda. <laughs> your turn. Waha. Yeah. It's funny. It's it's the same the same basic idea. Just kind of for me, the the they're talking about employing people, and for me, it's been um, it's, when I first started um, really teaching and uh, and freelancing down here. I definitely have had employers and coworkers in the same company, and I just kind of ignored my intuition that something wasn't right. Um, and I was like, yeah, no, they're great. They're great. You know, um, this job is great. And then I was like, okay. <laughs> um, and it's, it's like I said, it's the same thing. It's that letting yourself be around people that you, that you know, aren't, aren't those quality people. You're like, well, I need a job. <laughs> and now looking back and I'm like, oh my God, what a terrible experience. My first job. I still have like some, um, it's not job PS, insecure. Like PSDD. Anyway. Yeah, like I'm always afraid that somebody within, uh, you know, where I teach, where I teach now is great. Everybody's so wonderful, but I'm still like, oh, they're being too nice. <laughs> you know, they're definitely going to stab me in the back tomorrow. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because it was like, it was so wild to be, it was like, you know, all these people who are working with mega rich people. We're not mega rich ourselves, but we're working with mega rich people. So, um, it's like, of course, I didn't really consider that people would be so, um, you know, so cutthroat in some of these businesses that I'm like, wow, like, no, we're working together. We're a team. We're doing the thing, you know, and it's like, oh, we weren't a team. <laughs> okay. Um, and so, you know, and there were little signs here and there, but I didn't really realize until, you know, the end of working there when people were like, oh yeah, and this happened and that happened. And you know, this was going on behind the, behind the curtain. And I was like, oh, <laughs> okay. So if you have that intuition or you realize maybe this, these aren't the quality people, like definitely listen to that intuition before it gets to a bad point. It's a, that's a solid suggestion. I mean, especially again, throwing it back at role-playing stuff. If you got a table that like, they're cool and then they're not. It's okay to leave, right? Yeah, it's okay to I invite a player in, and if they, uh, you can invi you can invite a player in, and if they are not the peeps that you need around you because they cause havoc or are drama lords or whatever the heck they're going on that's in the negative, you can let them go. It's not you know there's plenty of other tables that they might work better in, uh, and it's not mm -hmm. your responsibility to make sure that they're happy. Kind of like it's not your responsibility for your uh your you as an employee to make the company money past your own job. You know what I mean? Um, but I digress and jump over into other things. Uh, I mean, I'm going to segue and stick on the bad decisions parts of things uh, and talk about you kind of hit on the like dealing with mega rich people and not not being yourself rich. Uh, being out of your own pond, right, with that can lead to very bad decisions, right? Again, trusting people that you're, you know, assume are on your team, but really aren't because you're not seeing the whole picture, yada, yada, yada. Um, or hiring the wrong people because they just don't know how to deal with others. Um, you know, one of those one of those uh, problems that most entrepreneurs find themselves with is figuring how how to sell what to who, right? Uh, if you're lucky, you have an avatar that's like, hey, this is my market. I'm only going to be selling to this people at this class, right? And you can get really really good right there. But if you're anything like us that jumps from whoever wants to be with us and figure out what they need. Um, pretty much across the board for all of us, right? That's kind of how our businesses work. Anyone can use your apps. Anyone can go into a bar. Anyone, you know what I mean? That kind of stuff. Anyone can use you for entertainment stuff and knowledge learning and all that fun things. Same thing with us. Um, so like learning how to sell to those people can lead to bad decisions. Do you guys have any suggestions for like mitigating that? Um, for, you know, improving on, uh, either having a baseline or a separation point for when you're selling to what, what type of people? I'll leave doing a really good job lately. Say that again. Sorry. 
I was saying, Ryan, do you want to start with this? Because you've been doing a really great job selling lately. I, that's funny you say you start with me because um, I was actually going to be a gentleman and say ladies first, only because <laughs> I feel like we've answered like the last three questions and then I, I, we might be like stealing a little bit of Amanda's no. thunder. She probably would have said a lot of the same things we might have said. Oh, no. So is that cool, Amanda? Why don't you go No, it's go fine. Ahead? It's fine. <laughs> oh, seriously. That'd be yeah, awesome. Yeah, no, it's great. I mean, for me in my line of business, it's because, um, I mean, you know, it's a little different, I think, than yours. But um, for me, it, it is a little hard because I do so many different things. Um, and like, how do I... You know, how do, I, how do I advertise myself to people who love uh, musical theater, who love uh, pop music or coffee house and paranormal and, you know, um, and uh, to be honest, I mean, the thing that for me, um, I've kind of landed on is just being me. <laughs> um, is It sounds funny, but I realized at some point, like, as far as what I'm selling, you know, I'm just, I'm selling myself, you know, and I'm selling this person who, you know, writes cute little songs <laughs> and this person who loves, she loves ghost stories and, and things that are just kind of silly, you know, not silly, but like out, you know, not in the realm of just everyday conversations. Tell me, tell me about the story of the Dietloff past now <laughs> and I will listen to you for two, you know, um, or, you know, and so I realized it's more about being me and and authentically me because I don't want to be a personality who's hi and welcome to this channel and please like and subscribe to my YouTube channel and don't forget um because that drives me crazy right like who is that I forget to tell people to just to subscribe for like Every an time. hour into my show Every time. it's it's me it's about being authentically me um and I'm not somebody who curses 24 seven because I'm a badass and I'm not, you know, again, I'm not that perky. Okay, here we go. Or here's what I eat every day. Um, cause I always think about them like, man, I should just make one of those videos because they all get 10,000 <laughs> views in a day. Um, but I, I don't want to do that. I'd rather sell myself as authentically true. And maybe I won't get a million subscribers on YouTube, but everybody who joins me every week for my show is genuine. And we like actually have relationships on these shows and that's, that's what I'm doing and selling. And that's how, again, maybe I'm not making millions of dollars, but, um, I've touched people's lives. <laughs> like people have told like, you've got me through this, this ordeal, this trauma that I'm going through because you sang this song that I needed to hear today. I asked you to sing it and you did. And I cried. <laughs> and like I said, and to me, I like, it doesn't matter because that's what I'm, what I'm selling. If that makes sense. And if you want to pay me for it, love it. And if you don't, I am happy to be in your life. So just be yourself. That's what I'm saying be yourself and be true because everything else is fake and maybe you'll get views but what is that in the in 10 years <laughs> hopefully four million dollars but that's besides <laughs> the point. Uh, you know there, there's well, a there's a phrase i picked up not that long ago from some silly video i watched that was uh people buy from people they like right you can be have the best pitch in the world uh but if people don't like you on some level they're not going to buy from you, right? And mm -hmm. I, since I since since I heard that and applied that to my sales tactics, it's worked pretty well. Yeah, just be just be genuine. So, Ryan and Chris, you guys have any additional add-ons there? Where you want me to go, Chris? Uh, Amanda, that was cool. By the way, um, just props to you. Thanks. You know, like for real that impact on those songs and getting people over the hump i mean that person could have been going a really really bad direction and you changed that direction i mean i think that's cool so props to you i think i think that's amazing um so yeah sales wise right so like right now i got the crispy hat on right um but um this i'll just use an ex a real live example from today please um i well walked done. in it was a it was a cold call honestly uh, to a liquor store down the road here. And it was this 
really big, tall Indian dude, super cool guy behind the counter. And I was like, Hey man, where are you from? You know, and there's just a, there's just a lot of hate still in the world. And there's a lot of people who judge and stuff, but like Amanda said, just be yourself, go in and be friendly, be the light kind of, you know, you know? So I just went in, I was like, Hey, it's like my best, my best friends from Kerala, India and the South. I always wanted to go there. Have you ever been there? He's like, as a matter of fact, I have been there and I love it and everything's natural and the food's great and it's so tropical. And I'm like, as a matter of fact, that, that friend helped us build our app. And that's so cool. Do you speak Malayalam? So he lit up, you know, and we just had like this great conversation. And then, you know, that after breaking the ice and just having this awesome conversation, I was like, well, by the way, we have a local beverage. It's called crispy, you know, up the street at the sports stands. They go through like 25 cases a week and we'd be happy to tell people that you have it in your store and we'll send them your way and i'll catch you a really great deal on some cases right now i got it out there in the back and you know he said well hold on let me call my the decision maker and he called him put me on the phone with him i kind of had to do the same thing break the ice with him they absolutely loved the conversation they loved the product next thing you know i i'm writing the check in their checkbook to our business and um you know we're at the same time my partner is putting up uh the the crispies on the display at, at at that moment while i'm getting paid and then i'm on the phone with chris and chris is sending them an invoice and we'll say tag and bag not only did we um you know sell our product and make money in that moment we made some really good friends and a great partnership and um, we're excited to see that partnership blossom and grow. And that's just a, an example today. Like Amanda said, just being yourself, being the light, and then good things will follow. It's like through all of the chaos, you know, there's a symphony been, being written if you, if you apply those tactics, I think. And that's kind of my live example from today. Nice. Yeah, that was, yeah, that was really good. And, and Amanda, you touched on it too. I like what you said because I think that, you know, when it comes to honesty, you need to be honest with your customers, but you also need to be honest with yourself. You want to build those relationships. Um, you want to do business with people that want to do business with you. And with me, it really comes down to, you know, how much value can I give to my customers? How, how much value can I give to the people that I love? How much value, you know, I, I look at it. I want to give you more value than you give me in, in money in return. And, and how do we get to that point? And when it comes to Leah, for example, you know, we're trying to get people to collect experiences. And I think that that is a crucial thing when it comes to Leah. It's like, why don't you collect experiences instead of stuff? Why don't you collect things that you'll remember, um, collect, you know, just, just good memories rather than, you know, stuff that's laying in, around the house and, and stuff like that. So it kind of goes both ways. Um, but I really, I've kind of uh, tried to toe the line between how do I create products that I'm super passionate about? How do I feel like I'm still living my purpose and, and what I want to do good in the world? And then in turn, you know, how do I give more value to people in order to, you know, feel and be successful? So those are the things that I look at when I'm looking at selling. Nice. Okay. I mean, that connection sounds to be the, the keynote across the board here, right? doesn't matter who you're selling to. It's how you sell it to it and how you make that connection. And again, pulling it back to my realm, that's like the whole thing. That's, that's, the, that's the whole part of the storytelling, the sitting around the table, the rolling the silly dice, making those memories, right? It's not necessarily about the money we're getting paid. It's, a, it's about those experiences that people are having, right? When we're working with businesses, it's not about the Yahoo's taking an hour break on Friday uh, to, you know, pull out their nerd characters and play with their boss. It is them playing with their boss and connecting and them becoming humans in everyone else's eyes or understanding each other's stuff or getting past silly dramas like someone not filling up the coffee pot in the morning because, you know, they just forget. You know what I mean? Because uh, you, you can make jokes about that in game and, oh, suddenly they remember because you made a joke about the coffee pot not being filled while you were being a goblin. You know, whatever. Uh, so... Having those experiences uh, is is the whole point, right? Um, uh, most of the point. There's other points too, but for today's <laughs> session, that's the point, dang it. Um, <laughs> so, going back to bad rules, bad decisions, all that fun stuff that we've been talking about. Um, kind of wrapping up on final thoughts here, because we're a little bit over time, because we started a little late. Um, but, uh, and I still want to give you guys time for promo stuff, but... Uh, 
what is your uh, best best worst experience? Right, and this this is this is a uh, something that you initially thought was terrible. Right, a, you failed, but you failed forward. It was something that was so negative that it became a positive. Um, just one of those events that was just like this. This is gonna go bad, but turned out great. Um, any thoughts anyone has starters <laughs> anything like that yeah i can start if, okay um yeah so i'll kind of reiterate where i was at um with going through the bad times of of trying to get through covid not knowing if i was going to pay my bills not knowing if we we're going to keep our house not knowing where the future was going to lead to actually spending time actually thinking and turning my life around and just knowing that I wasn't on the right path, that I had to do something about it. And nobody's going to change this life other than me. If I want to be different, I've got to be the one that makes those decisions. I've got the one that puts in those actions. I've got to be the one that points this ship in the right direction and, you know, uh, leads the people, helps get things to where we needed to be. And that's where the idea of Leah came. And I think that it was born out of those bad moments and in my lifestyle too. You know, I've really done a much better job of, of being disciplined and um, having a much more positive life. But, you know, I try to look at things and think that everything in life, no matter what it is, is either a gift or an opportunity, no matter how you look at it. And so, you know, you can fall down, you can have terrible things happen to you, but ultimately who really knows what is good and what is bad and how can I turn this into a, a great opportunity? So, um, you know, I just think that having perseverance and just looking at things like they are a blessing, that they are a gift, that um, we could turn this into an opportunity really has helped me get through all of the dark times that I've gone through. Feel that. Yeah. We're gonna really mix it up and throw Amanda in there before we let Ryan go. Wahaha. Okay. Um you know, I mean, I won't say it's it's one experience, but um what it is is the failure is my perfectionism. <laughs> um, especially as a musician, because I think we're all like this. Um I never wanted to perform unless it was a hundred percent perfect um and if i made a mistake i failed big time if i forgot a word if i sang a note a little flat um it's crap and what do i do with this like i hate it and i never want to do see any of these people again <laughs> right um and what ended up is going back you know what ended up happening with this is one like i stopped wanting to do things but i wanted to do them but i didn't want to do them has caused me so much stress around the thing that i love but um i when i started performing live on live streams um it was rough at first because i was like oh my god like i i would sing you know 10 songs 10 15 songs a night and again if one was terrible not even terrible too terrible to me <laughs> Um, I was like, well, that whole show was awful. I don't know why people are watching. <laughs> but what I learned in all of that is that like live music, doing this kind of thing is not perfection. It's real. Um, and so I actually started listening because I started thinking about these things. I was like, well, let me listen. And I started listening and watching people performing live, these famous musicians and actors, Broadway performers. And even on the radio, they'd come on and I'd be like, oh, like, yeah, their voice doesn't sound amazing on this right now because maybe they were having a bad day. Like, we all are not perfect. <laughs> you know, even these people that I, I, I think of as perfect because I hear their perfect recordings and I watch their music video and these, I see their their Instagram and they're just singing and it's amazing, you know, and I'm like, okay. Um, and realizing again, as humans, that's not what we're all about. And, and people aren't interested in just me being a recording that they press play on every week. 
um, I'm a person and they, they would just want to hear me be me. And then all of a sudden one day I felt so much more free. And so I started exploring new genres of singing and now I do everything and I decided to start playing guitar. And sometimes I learn on my live stream. I'm like, Hey, what's this chord? All right. I'm going to give it a try. Here we go, people. <laughs> and, um, stuff that I would never do before because I was too scared and anxious and, I just thought it would be bad. And I'm like, no, it's real. And I love that. I love putting my real self out and not just a pretty picture. <laughs> so my perfectionism and <laughs> was my big failure. And it actually made me hit a wall and, and stop <laughs> and be real. Nice. Okay. I mean, that's a, that's a fantastic journey to go through, to be honest, for, for a lot of people. So. Ryan, that puts you on the spotlight for 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 your your thoughts slash uh, answering the question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, just like these guys said. I, I mean, like, what comes to mind is like when you have a setback, take a step back and get ready for the comeback. Right? It's like who hasn't had to have that mentality? Um, she's a singer. We're both ex athletes. You're an amazing gamer. Like we all, there, we have all had those moments where we're like, "Oh, I could have done so much better." Like, what was I doing? Like, and then you think it over and over again. If I would have done this, it would have turned out this way. Would have done this, it would have turned out. We beat the. Cr I beat. I think. I think we all do. But I know I beat the crap out of myself. I want to say I'm a perfectionist, but I know my potential on all things. And when I don't hit what I, you know, my level. If I'm even under or performing in whatever it is, whether it's work, sports, whatever it is, being a dad, being a husband, it's so pissed off and take that time to reflect, right? So, like, I mean, I'll just kick it back super quick to corporate thing. You know, I got way up there, I was going like this, stressed out, all that stuff. And I felt like a, I honestly felt like a failure when I walked away because I felt like I was giving up, right? I felt like I was giving up. What I realized was I was stepping outside of the box. Here I go from financial services to being with Chris in the hospitality business, which I know nothing about, but I knew numbers, I knew finances, I knew sales, I knew partnerships. I knew how to deal with vendors and customers and all this stuff. So I just took everything I learned and applied for all those years and, you know, working for the man and then applied them to hospitality with Chris. And here I was making money for my family and Chris's family and a small business owner or somebody who's great in the community. And I felt so much more fulfilled than just doing it for this huge billion dollar corporation where I was just the number. So for me, it was like, I felt like I fell, bam, you know, coming out of corporate. Then, you know, little did I know that I was landing in a place where I could show my value even more and, um, you know, really reach my, in my opinion, my full potential. And I was able to take baby steps into, you know, being a partner with Leah and, and, and being now part of a startup that we're trying to grow, right? While learning how to be not, a, you know, work in a small business, but see a small business owner grow too and, and bless his family and mine. So that's kind of my thing, man. I think it's, it's cool to have that fire and to really reach your full potential and maybe step outside of the box a little bit. It's not a bad thing. Fantastic. All right. Well, we're at the end of the show. So I'm going to give you all a little bit of time to tell people where they can find you, what, what, what you're doing, all that fun stuff. Um, and then oh, you'll get to hear me ramble about our stuff for the last 30 seconds. And then you'll hear some cool. music and then we'll do our after action review afterwards. So don't leave till I say so. Well, ha ha. Um, so we're going to start ladies first on this one. So Amanda, please, where can people find you? What's your things? All that fun stuff. One more time for everybody. Great. <laughs> yeah and, as, um, and so, as usual for the viewers sorry to cut you off all this will be in the uh, episode description so people will be able to find this or at least the, the most important one <laughs> <laughs> um so my website is amanda on demanda dot com um amanda on demanda uh that's also the name of my youtube show which you can find if you just put that under the YouTubes. <laughs> um, and so I, that's my weekly just karaoke show. It's a live request show. So you can um, request things in the live chat or you can send them to my website and I'll see them eventually. I do different themes uh, every week. Right now I'm going through the alphabet. I'm on, I just am on letter D. <laughs> I'm doing all these songs that start with the letter D. I, sometimes I do different eras or whatever, but I would do that. Um, it's really fun. Like I said, I also have the Magical Mystery Hour. 
uh, YouTube live stream and podcast. Um, so check that out. Like I said, we're going to go live on Sunday on the Vaudacity YouTube network. Um, so that's going to be really cool. We're going to talk about um, haunted places in LA. Um, so that's going to be really fun. <laughs> And um, so both those shows are on the Vaudacity Network. My website's amandaondemanda.com. Uh, Facebook is just Amanda Benjamin Singer. <laughs> um, you can find it there. Instagram is Amanda on Demanda. We also have Vaudacity Network on Facebook and Instagram. And I, I even have a TikTok. I just don't use it that much. It's also Amanda on Demanda. <laughs> no one's using TikTok right now. It's going to get bad. I, <laughs> right? <laughs> I just, I mostly just use it for filters. It's just like. Hey, that's, you like, use CapCut. Cap. What are you talking about? That's, that's cheating. Don't, 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 don't use it for that. No, just play it. Um, all right. Ryan, and then we'll end with Chris. Okay. Since so, you're wearing the crispy um, one, talk about crispy. Wow. Yeah, yeah, no, no, that's cool. It was funny. You already read my mind. I'm like, which one is Chris going to do? Which one am I going to do? But no, that's cool. But hey, Amanda, real quick, um, yeah. I'm, I'm check out your channel. So D. For the letter D, let's can we can I request Dream On by Aerosmith? Oh. What was it? oh yeah. Nice. There you go. That's gonna be my request for the letter nice. D. Nice, nice. Um so so crispy cocktails, um, just crispycocktails.com. Check out the website. We got four flavors. Um, they're amazing. We do variety packs, we do 12 pack variety packs, we do cases, we do all kinds of stuff. And it's a seven percent ABV vodka cocktail. So be careful, it's seven percent, not four percent. So it'll it'll get you a little bit. So just be careful, drink responsibly. Um, but it's a it's a nice, wonderful uh drink and, and people are absolutely loving it. Fantastic. I was gonna say seven percent is like a percentage over uh a soda up here. I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I'm I'm checking out the website right now. Yeah, I'm Crispy Cocktails. Check it out, and you'll see our summer uh, commercial on there with the boat. And that's Chris's yes, boat, and that, just, that's us. Up. Yeah, that's no yeah, that's us. Uh, that's Chris and his family and our friends. We're all surfing and having a good time. And we actually just cut our other commercial up at Winter Park, uh, doing the snowboarding stuff, and it was it's it's coming to the website too uh, soon as well. So pretty cool. Just really quick, do you have a favorite flavor? I'm like looking at these. Is there a favorite one? My favorite Chris? flavor is the uh, Tropical Smash. It's a pineapple mango. Um, our blueberry lemonade, the Blue Squeeze, that one's our number one seller. We have a King Peach that is also very good. And then a Cherry Press, which is a cherry vanilla. So they're all very good. Um, we are growing. Um, we are just in Colorado right now, but uh, hopefully we'll be out I was going to say, can I ship things to Los Angeles? <laughs> I think you gotta have a liquor license for that, unfortunately. I know. How can I get these? <laughs> yeah. Don't get worry, we will connect. Road trip. We will connect. Yes, Road yes. Trip. yes you can contact right. us on our on our website if you'd like. So um if you're ever in the Denver area too, you could swing by the Crimson and Gold Tavern. It's by Denver University or DU. Um so it's a great sports bar. Um, local place. Um, if anybody's interested in that, um, also own the Sports Lounge off Broadway. That's in Highlands Ranch, 15 miles south of Denver. Um, it is also a sports bar. Um, you can look us up at sportsloungebar.com. And then um, the real thing that we're excited about is um, obviously we're excited about everything, but is LIA. It's uh, L I A, it's Liabilities into Assets. Uh, liabilitiesintoassets.com. You can check out our website. Um, you can also download our app on Android or um, iOS, Apple. Um, just search uh, Leah Marketplace in the um, App Store. And um, on there, you can rent anything from any other users. You can also post items to rent out to people in your community to make some money on the things that you already own. So uh, check those out. Um, you can reach us if you have any question at info at liabilitiesandassets.com. And I uh, really appreciate you having us on the show. So this has been great. Of course, of course. Now, uh, just a clarifying question. Uh, Leah is, is nationwide, right? Yeah, you can, yes, it, you can yes, it is. Download it anywhere. Perfect. Okay, just got to make sure because sometimes we get people like, yeah, check out our app, but it only affects these two states. Good luck. <laughs> no, we are, sad we are way up in Alaska over here just like, I need things too. 
Hey, Rook, can I yes. tell just a super, very fast yeah, story sure. about yeah. Leo, just real quick? Um, like Chris said, I mean, anytime a transaction is done on there, it's a portion of that transaction goes to the Make-A-Wish Foundation. So that's super cool, right, for the kids, right? But um, just, uh, we want people to look at Leah like this, right? Everybody knows how expensive a camera is or a camera lens, like the good ones, like to get the great shots or the Netflix cameras to take commercials with, like you see on our website, right, Amanda? Um, like, imagine somebody that has all these creative ideas, they have all this talent, but they don't have the money to afford that lens or that camera. They're just stuck. And it's so difficult. Well, they go on Leah, they see that lens, they see that camera, but look, it's 50 bucks for the day. Oh my gosh, they could scrounge it 50 bucks somehow, some way, rent that for a day, go out, do their commercial, do their shoot, do their photos, maybe realize some income off of those photos, right? And they're like, okay, cool. And then they make a little money. And then they earn and earn and earn by renting off Leah. And then they're able to finally buy their own, right? So like Chris said, the big thing for us is helping the community, helping people achieve those dreams, achieve those goals. And who knows, when they rent the camera from this individual in the community, they might talk a little bit. There might be a mentorship there from the person that does have the camera that's lending the camera to the kid coming up or the girl coming up. You know, that's kind of what we want to see. I mean, you know, maybe you can't afford a power, power washer. It's 500 bucks or whatever. You only need it for a day. Why why go out and spend 500 bucks when you can rent it off Leah for 30 bucks for the day, right? Just little things like that to help the community because, I mean, everything's really expensive. Inflation's high. Let's quit giving our money to these big corporations. That's, and, and, and Chris came up with the saying, together we own everything. And if we could get everybody to think that way and have that mentality, I think it'll be a really, really cool thing. So that's that's kind of our goal. It's a good goal. And you just remind me I have a power washer to open in my garage and use shortly because it is gross up here right now with everything melting. <laughs> I'm very excited to use that yeah. thing. I've been waiting for forever. Um, So, our stuff, uh, real quick. Uh, as you guys yes. know, epicsages.com is where you find most of our stuff. We're Epic Sages on all the social medias except for TikTok, which is my Rook Talk. Um, and then... Subscribe, like, follow, all the things, please. Thank you for reminding me, Amanda, because I would have forgot that 100%. Uh, what I never forget, though, is our, I say this jokingly, is our code for the month. This month is you fool 907 all capital letters. Uh, you fool Y-O-U-F-O-O-L-907. Get your 10% off on the website on everything that we actually sell, make, do, uh, that isn't a third-party thing. Um, And with all that being said, thank you guys so much. Uh, stick around for the music and with adventure in mind have a wonderful time peace